children play like they are all the world over. The men are the members of all the hunting and fighting implements. Here, old Barony is shaping a spear, preparatory to a kangaroo hunt. The natives have had iron knives for many, many years. They first got knives from the Macassans in exchange for beige de mer or tree pen, an edible sort of sea slug. Mutterman, with the shark's teeth headdress, is sitting with his uncle and family making up flint-headed spears. The flint is fixed to the shaft with wild beeswax. Every child and young man of the tribe is given an uncle, not a blood relation but a sort of godfather who instructs him in all the ways of the tribe. Mutterman rolls on the wax with his woomera, or throwing stick. After the flint is fixed, string is bound over the wax, made from fibrous leaves of the pandanus tree. The double-pronged spear is a fishing spear with barbs to stop the fish escaping. Meanwhile, the women of the tribe make all the domestic implements. The woman in the foreground is plaiting an amulet. She also uses string made from the leaves of the pandanus tree. This woman is making a dilly bag, a hold all used when food gathering. When carried, the bag is supported on their backs by a strap that passes around their foreheads. These women are making water carriers from the bark of the paper bark tree. Baler shells are also used for carrying water. The old men say, this is good wallaby country. So the hunters go down to the water hole and smear their bodies with clay. They believe that this makeup gives them magic powers over their prey. Also, the clay helps to disguise their body smell and keep their prey from getting scent of them. The dark and light markings give them camouflage in the dappled light and shade of the trees. The hunters go out, led by decoys, the men holding charms in their mouths, which represent the snout of the kangaroo or wallaby. Notice that they lift their feet high so that the grass shall not rustle as they walk. The Aborigines are brilliant trekkers and will follow spoor, which is quite invisible to white men.
The decoy approaches the prey from another direction. Holding his charm, made from plaited reeds between his teeth, he imitates the movements of the animals. He believes that this gives him magic control over them. The decoys are so good at this imitation that the kangaroos or wallabies will frequently see them from a distance without being frightened. While the decoy holds the interest of the kangaroo with his magic, the hunters creep up. The hunter suddenly freezes and stands quite still for a second as the kangaroo glances his way. Kit the poi fits his spear into the woomera which makes his throwing arm nearly twice as long. The men throw the kangaroo on the open flame to singe off the hair. There are certain taboos regarding food. These are regulated by the council of old men according to the food supply. For example, if there is a shortage of certain food, it is supplied to the old men first. Then if there is any left to the young men, the hunters and warriors, and only if there is still plenty, may the women and children partake. The animal is jointed and cut up with a spear or woomera. These men are eating mashed stingray. The stingray is cooked, then chewed and spat out and then baked once again. After the meal they dance. One native beats time with sticks, another plays the didgeridoo, a drone pipe. This sort of dance is known as a play corroboree, and anyone may join in.
It is an expression of contentment and happiness. There is good game about. This is the dance of the mullet totem. The dancers are mullet, a local fish, and the dancer with a bag in his mouth is a crocodile prowling for food in a school of mullet. The mullet flap their woomera for fins and remain calm until the crocodile approaches, then they all jump with fear. <laughs> 